And welcome everybody here in Twitch Chats and everybody on YouTube. For our next best of one deck for today, we got some Orzov Sacrifice. That's right, we're going to be trying to uh, sacrifice our own creatures for profit and drain out our opponents. So what our deck's built around is we're, we're a low-to-the-ground deck with just 22 lands where we are going to be pinging our opponent with uh, Cauldron Familiar, of course, Cauldron Familiar Witch's Oven, ping our opponent there. We have uh, Corpse Knight. Every, whenever another creature eat, enters the battlefield under control, our opponents lose a life. Um, we have Cruel Celebrant. Whenever it or another creature you control dies, they lose a life, and you gain a life. And also a Yara, whenever it or another black creature enters the battlefield under your control, your opponents lose a life, you gain a life. Lots of ways for our opponent to make our opponents lose a life, and most of them making us gain a life also. And that's kind of like what we're going to be doing, is just death by 20 pings here. We also have the Priest of Forgotten Gods. Whenever we activate this and sacrifice two other creatures, we make our opponent lose two life. So that's a way to, to do that as well. Hunted Witness is not a black creature for a Yara, um, but it's just a, a really good creature because whenever you uh, sacrifice this, you get another creature as well. So it works very well with Corpse Knight and Cruel Celebrant and also Priest being a very good creature to sacrifice. So we got the Hunted Witnesses in here. Midnight Reaper gives us that card advantage with our creatures dying because uh, we're, we're going to need a lot of gas. So that's what Midnight Reaper helps provide. Um, Priest can also, because it can draw a card when it activates, a Yara can activate to draw a card also. And then we have our reanimate effects. We have Soren that can bring stuff back from the graveyard that we've previously sacrificed, and of course a couple gruesome menageries at the top end that can bring back a 1, 2, and a 3 drop, so we can get 3 creatures back. If we get like Corpse Knight and a Yara and Cauldron Familiar at the same time, a Yara is going to trigger three times. Corpse Knight's going to trigger twice because it's another. And then Cauldron Familiar triggers once. So that could just be like six uh, damage out of nowhere. Of like they lose six and we gain four. Um, so yeah, that's, that's kind of like what, what our deck's about. Uh, about just, just trying to ping our opponents a whole lot. Um, as far as like playing this in best of three. In best of three, I like going bigger and having stuff like Tithe Takers and having more Sorens and having, you know, Bolas Citadel or Command the Dread Horde and, you know, having a couple more lands, you know, basically going bigger. But in best of one, we don't have to worry about the, the, the sideboard games where my opponent's going to have a lot of good interaction for us. We just want to um, just have our, our game one plan of try to stay real low to the ground and uh, hopefully get some get enough damage in and you know with the chip shot damage from just different creatures attacking and everything and just um you know so so therefore i think corpse knight and cruel celebrant could be better here but usually when i've played these decks i've been disappointed by these two cards um and that's in best of three but i want to try them out in best of one and in conjunction with gruesome menagerie as well all right so let's give this a try orzov sacrifice so we're going to be playing seven games in ranked that's what we're doing with our best of one decks over here. Yeah, Midnight Reaper is gonna is definitely one of our very best cards for sure. Um, yeah, Gutter Bones does work really well with Priest and Yara. As far as like Gutter Bones instead of Hunted Witness, um, it does work better with a Yara, but I think that Hunted Witness works better. I mean, you can just, you know, if you have the extra mana, you can keep picking it up, of course, and, and that makes it amazing. So I'm not sure. <laughs> they banned Veil of Summer and Pioneer. It's possible it gets banned in Standard. That's possible, honestly. And if it's banned in Pioneer, that's a... Yeah, I could see it get banned in Standard. So I led with the Cauldron Familiar because I was, I was hoping to be able to get a point of damage in with attacking there. I just have two planes in the deck, right? Like, isn't that it? Yeah, I just have two planes. So we got them both in our hand here. 
Get it. That Corpse Knight was the only thing that cost two mana. <laughs> Everything's just costing one. Start taking down these fervent champions. Girl Celebrant, not bad. Not a bad draw. Well, if they have... If they have Ember Cleave, I'm just going to die. Well, that's spectacular. That's not good. I don't know, maybe maybe we can get that here. I don't know. Depends if they move over Ember Cleave or not. If they keep Ember Cleave on Fervent Champion, we have a chance. It's pretty hard to imagine they're going to just keep Ember Cleave over there. So unfortunately, we have both of our basic planes. It'd be nice to be able to play this thing. make life, life difficult. Well, 
That was a that was a really bad attack by my opponent. I think we, we may be able to win this now. That was a really bad attack, attacking with both of those. Do I have enough? This is four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, that was just a terrible attack. I think I have exactly lethal. No, I have... I have one extra. Revapa gifting out some subs. Let's get to that sub goal. Hawkeye with the hype. Welcome to our three new subs, Giovanni, Kevin July, and Tecro. All right. So let's see. Let's go. Let's move this up to 10. We got that sub goal. Ten out of twenty. And we also got a win. So I need to mark that over here. My opponent with that really bad attack. Your resub's coming up soon. Nice. All right. And then I had another question. Uh, Dalla Darren, how would you compare the Mardu enchantments list you played Wednesday to the one that we played a couple of weeks ago? Um, I, th I think I liked the one we played Wednesday more, um, especially for best of three. Um, basically, the one I played a couple of weeks ago was Fires and Revenge of Ravens. Um, and I'm, so I'm not sure if... Not sure what those cards are. Or like, you know, like Fires is, is good. Um, I don't know if I should be keeping this. We're on the we're on the play though. So that's good. Alright, so our next So yeah, our next um twelve hour twelve hour stream. So yeah, underneath if you're watching if you're watching on your PC underneath the stream, like in the there's an info panel about it. So we were at, so now that that's our 10th, I'm updating it now. So now that's our 10th out of 20 sub goals. So we're, so 10 sub goals away now. Ten sub goals away. What do you think is better in Golgari Adventures for best of one? Vivian plus Nyssa plus Questing Beast or Liliana plus Vraska plus Rankle? Probably Vivian Nissa Questing Beast. I think I'll go that. I think I think Lily and Rankle aren't as good in best of one with like the whole sacrifice stuff. Because there's there's more small creatures in best of one. It looks like this could be Simic Flash again. Or it could be, there we go, or it could be Blue Eye Control. I'm known for my excellent timing. I've got time. We will. So definitely very glad we have the. Soren. Soren's going to be one of my best cards here in this matchup. Hmm. It's just a creature. Let's we'll take it. I like the full Windsor. It's my favorite tie knot.
vampirism is a useful trait. Me, I'm not the only one. Okay, you can't just sit right there where I can't see the screen. I have to be able to see the screen. <laughs> so I guess they're struggling on lands. I didn't realize I had six lands in play already. Does that make sense? I've, active, I've activated Soren three times. That makes sense. Trust me. You'll thank me later. Here we go. I am familiar with pain. Yeah, they're struggling with land drops over there. Yeah, the shock lands are the most important dual lands for sure. I will see a matter of time. Time for a drink. Um. So I could have activated Castle instead of playing Cauldron Familiar. I like in the Calder Familiar in play, getting the double trigger here. Also, so if they do play a sweeper, I can menagerie back, make them lose six life. And then with the Soren, make them lose a seventh. And they're at eight right now. I just attacked them for two, like my first attack against them. I just attacked them for two, and they're at eight. <laughs> That's what. And they haven't played any shock lands or anything. That's what the deck does with all the pings everywhere. This might be a bad idea. Ooh. So that's double ping. Double ping. Triple ping. Death by a hundred pings. That's awesome. All right, we're two and zero. Yeah, the list for the Mythic Championship, yeah, they're good in the ladder. Yeah, definitely. Absolutely. However, again, if if you're only gonna craft like one deck, if you're if you're just like you know, like putting a, a deck together that's gonna be like your one deck that you're gonna craft for this format, you may wanna wait a week because in one week we're going to have a week from today we're going to have the next banned and restricted announcement and there's a chance that standard gets shaken up quite a bit so you you know if you only have like a, a finite amount of wild cards and that you want to spend you may want to wait a week um no white mana right now even if i just had like a third land i knew i was going to play the midnight reaper this would be a little bit better Basically, the reason why I would maybe keep this hand is because of Midnight Reaper. This card's so good, and having this on the play, this card's awesome. I think I'm going to mulligan, though. I don't know. All I have to do is just draw one land, and then we have Midnight Reaper, and then it's going to help turn on everything. I'll give it a try. What's up, Zerf? Going good. Um. Yeah. We're, yep. Having having a good time here with the best of one day Monday. Oh, 
champion. Well, that was just the... <laughs> that was just the worst that could happen. Alright, can I, can I go back and mulligan now? Can we go back and mulligan? If I would have known that I was going to draw a Hunted Witness on turn one and my opponent was going to go turn one Fervent Champion, I would have I would have mulliganed so fast. So fast. All right. I sh guess we should have mulliganed. Magic stuff. But yeah, we did not play Midnight Reaper on three, which is the reason why I kept the hand. My opponent missed land drop as well. They have to just have another boulder rush, right? They just make that attack so fast. It's got to be a boulder rush. Maybe not. If I could double spell with any of those, I would double spell, but I can't. I just play the, the Reaper. So yeah, my opponent is just stuck on lands as well. All right, so Ember Cleave. Ember Cleave could be a huge problem. Yeah, there's the list right there, FLE. I think that block just killed my opponent. Yep. They would have taken another two. Alright, so my opponent also had mana troubles there. Slowed them down. And we're 3 0. This deck's been performing pretty well. Cruel Celebrant and Corpse Knight and a Yara. So many triggers. It's been pretty good. Oh, Escoria, I just tried to make a combo deck with Kaya and Ashiok and it worked. Okay, cool. Um, yeah. 
That was something that I'd written down. I, I didn't get to today, but that, that was a deck that I was going to be making. All right, we'll keep it. So we'll go turn one familiar, turn two priest. Yeah, this deck's not very, that's not too expensive. That's true. We got a lot of commons and uncommons in here. So they shocked. They're already taking out 10% of their life total right there. Phoenix Revive on that four-month streak. Thanks, Phoenix Revive. Ah, move that a little bit back then. All right, number 11 today. Hmm. Did not grab that white mana. Unfortunately. All right, so that'll be the white mana. So we basically have to we have to outpace this questing beast doing four damage to me a turn, which I think we can. We can get this set up. Oh, never mind. Never mind. GG's. Uh, yeah, um, call me Lay. Were you, were you talking about like this kind of deck? Not, nothing in this kind of deck would will be banned in the next BNR. I wouldn't imagine, but I mean, it, it doesn't hurt to wait though. If if you can wait, it doesn't hurt to wait just to um, I mean, I guess it's. I guess it's possible that Witches Oven or Cauldron Familiar would get banned, but I, I wouldn't I wouldn't expect that at all. That'd be a shocker. Hand's not spectacular right now.
It's a, just got a whole lot better, though. Wow, this hand just got a lot better. I was gonna attack for nine there, or like, you know, we just dealt nine damage there that turn. Okay, so we want to... How do I wanna do this? I could sacrifice the Hunted Witness and then and get the new token out and do two to my opponent that way. And then I'd still have still have this thing to be able to come back. But I think instead so instead of dealing two damage, I'm gonna keep the one one. All right, and now I know I'm going to be able to Menagerie next turn, and so I want a, a 1, a 2, and a 3 in my graveyard to be able to Menagerie. And so that's why I'm just playing the Murderous Rider out here. So we're going to be able to kill them. So yeah, like they had, they had turn 4 Sweeper, turn 5 Sweeper, and they're dead. They don't get a turn 6. What happened to the the murderous rider? What happened to the murderous rider? Where'd it go? Oh, it goes to the bottom. Right, it goes to the bottom. Hmm. Oh well, we still have lethal. <laughs> I guess playing the murderous rider out for for gruesome menagerie. <laughs> yeah, I guess that was not the smartest thing. Like, really, where'd that card go? Whatever. Right. Every point matters. Got him down to exactly zero there. Let's see. Yeah, and everybody in chat was like, what are you doing? Roger's going to go to the bottom. And I'm over here. Do 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 do. Don't mind me. All right, we got a Yara Reaper. I like that. Unfortunately, a Yara can only sacrifice black creatures. We can't sacrifice Hunted Witness to a Yara. Good curve filler there. Bad curve filler there. I know, right? Whenever, yeah, whenever Dominaria released, Big Teferi was just so much better than everything else. It was crazy. And now, yeah, yeah, you're right. Now it's just like Big Teferi is, is just pretty fair compared to everything else now. It's like now they're just like, oh, we'll just we'll just print three mana walkers. Too fair, you say? Or like too, or like yeah, too good, you say? Well. We'll show you too good. <laughs> I 
Looks like we're going to win the Battle of the Pings. And we're 5-1. and one. Move into Diamond Tier 1. Alright, one more match here. With Orzhov Sacrifice. Well, also at the time when... Yeah, he said that people hated Big Teferi because of the shell that he was in, and he was the slowest win con known to man. And also at the time, though, Big Teferi gave gave you a, a pretty big mana advantage of untapping two lands every turn. Like, that's that was a lot of extra mana. Um, you know, you could play it, then you can hold two mana up for a counter spell and stuff, and, and so on. Like, over time, that was a lot of extra mana. But now, but then since then, they're just printing, you know, like, Wilderness Reclamation and Fires of Invention and, you know, uh, Experimental Frenzy and Bolas Citadel and... Um, so many ways that you can just have tons and tons of mana, and it's just like two extra mana a turn. While at the time was game breaking, now it's just I just keep on putting like more things over, going over and over the top. Yeah, Nissa. There was a time that two two extra mana was a lot. Kind of keep the oven. Hmm. Yeah, command the dread horde. Another card like that. They just. There's so many cards that can just generate. Um, even if, even if like you know, command the dread horde doesn't generate lots of mana, but it it's six mana for you know potentially you know like twenty mana worth of stuff, you know, kind of thing, and so on. Right on schedule. That's more like it. So we last time we played against like the Teferi deck like this, the played you know, I played a Yara, they played Teferi to bounce a Yara, then I played Soren to kill the Teferi. We were on the play, and we won pretty easily. This this is the same kind of thing. If we were on the play here, this would have been a lot better. Like you know, Soren killed the, the Teferi. I'm shocking in with these goblet shrines because my opponent knows about the Goblet Shrines. I demand servitude. No, I am not making this up as I go. I won't let you win. <laughs> what a mess I've made. Corpse Knight is just a creature. I just I just need a creature here with Doom Foretold. Alright, good. They didn't have removal. That hurts. Whoa. What? They didn't kill the Soren? Meta Salmon. Thanks so much for the sub. Thanks, Meta. Um...
I guess I'm just going to be getting rid of the Soren, though, I guess. Alright, that's our 12th sub of the day. Yeah, Black Castle would definitely help us out. Don't worry, I got this. Mm. Here goes nothing. Saying, saying three mana to fairy is barely playable isn't that's that's not accurate at all. Three mana to fairy is still one of the very best cards in the format. There's just not there's not great other like blue and white cards around it, especially white. I'm supposed to keep the swamp. I think I'm supposed to keep the swamp. Hey, what's up, Xanthan? But the the actual card to fairy time raveler is it's got to be in the like the list of the top five best cards in standard. Let's try. This. Looks like my opponent's gonna get this. Those prison realms, real clutch against my midnight reapers. And we got half of our lands. Yeah, we've drawn half of our lands. Oh, Alright, so five and two. Nothing wrong with that, though. Still a good league. What do I need here? Like, Gruesome Menagerie? Do I have the mana to cast it? Oh, I'm one short. I thought I was going to still be able to cast it after casting casting the familiar. Yeah, there's only 22 lands in the deck. So yeah, we drew 11 in our first 18 cards. Yes, yeah, we played re repeating reverberation with Grixis. Yeah, it was pretty sweet. We got to do some fun stuff with it. Uh, no, no, Teferi is still, will still, no, the... No, the three mana Teferi will still be in standard whenever the Teferi core set is next summer. It was good. Uh, one of my losses was because I really liked the reverberation. I went and grabbed it from my sideboard instead of doing something else. But uh, we got to do some cool stuff with reverberation for sure. Um, oh, there you go, Frank. Nice. Uh, it's up on YouTube right now. It's already up there. Okay. Anyway, uh, Orzov Sacrifice. Uh, we have, um, you know, we went five and two and I'd have to say it played pretty well for, you know, for best of one here. I think that, that this deck would struggle a little bit more in best of three whenever your opponent, again, whenever your opponent, uh, really tunes their deck to, to beat Corpse Knight, Cruel Celebrant, that kind of stuff. But I have to say that I was impressed by these two cards in the best of one setting here. Um, they, yeah, they looked good, honestly. Like we got a lot of pings in with with those two cards, um, 
yeah, no, no complaints here. You know, like our two losses, like Ember Cleave. I mean, Ember Cleave's gonna get you. Like that's just gonna happen. But oh well. Um, and then uh, we we did beat one Ember Cleave. Like we had one opponent that attacked with an Ember Cleave three times, and we won that game. But then the second time, uh, you know, Love Struck Beast into Questing Beast into Ember Cleave. That was just too much there. And yeah, that. And then we lost to Esper. It would have been a whole lot different game if we were on the play, as, as we talked about. Um, but that's just how it goes. Uh, the prison realms that they had—you don't always see that deck with a bunch of prison realms. But the prison realms for the Midnight Reapers were a pretty big game. And we drew eleven lands in our first eighteen cards. That also did not help either. But oh well, that's Orzhov Sacrifice. Pretty cool deck. I liked it. Five and two is good. All right, if you're watching on YouTube, hope you enjoyed the deck as well. And if so, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe buttons over there. I'd appreciate both of those. And, of course, leave some comments. I always like seeing the comments in the comment section. Uh, but thank you so much for watching Orzov Sacrifice, and I'll see you for the next video.